In this tutorial today, we're going to have a look at how to understand our navigator in order to create save views, which we then place on the layout, which we then publish. So when we're doing our modeling, creating our 3D models, we, we really mostly understand this in terms of what we place on a story. And that story typically represents a floor plan, but of course we can have other views as well, such as sections, elevations, 2D views, and of course a, a 3D view. But this is showing the, the base modeling information. So from this modeled information, how do we create the views which we then want to put onto a page? If we start with a, a ground floor plan to use as an, as an example, what is a ground floor plan made up of? In order to understand this best, if we go straight to try to create a save view, this will give us the best understanding of this. When I say saved view, I'm talking about saving a view in our view map. So that's this next box in our navigator series that we've got here. Now the way that I tend to set this up is to put them all into uh, folders, sub categories and that just makes them easy to find but most importantly these are our views these are our drawings these are the representations and ideally these are what we are going to see on each of the layouts which of course we find here so we want these to be easy to understand but most importantly intentional we don't want to name them without definition so when I name this ground floor how do I do that I could place this directly onto a layout, but then I wouldn't be able to manage in my save views very well. So to save this and manage this well, I'm going to go to my view map. And then I could be saving this as a site plan or a floor plan or a detailed representation of maybe a bathroom or a kitchen. That would all be generated from this story and from this view. So then I have to choose a few settings. So if, for instance, if I go to floor plan, save current view, right click. What's the settings that I want to save? Where is it coming from? Do I want to have an ID? No, not in this case. I don't like using IDs for my save views. Do I want the name to be ground floor? That's too generic. It's not really telling me anything. So instead I'm going to customize that and call it something specific. So maybe this is ground floor. Let's put the caps on. Presentation floor plan or something along the lines of that. Now these are the options that I can choose from when saving my view and hopefully I'm already going to save it with the way that it is but we'll see currently that I have a layer combination of custom which is sort of a bad way of working because it means that I can't deliberately turn on or turn off layers and then manage those layers based on what I can see so what I really should be doing is changing this to something that aligns with what the intention of my drawing is so I deliberately call this presentation floor plan to suggest that I probably want to use a layer combination, again this is something that I've set up, which is called RMD Plan Floor Presentation. Scale. What scale do I want this to view at? It depends on what I'm trying to see and how large the project is and how large the piece of paper that I'm going to be putting that on. In this case I'm using a one pieces of paper. So a scale of 1 to 100 should fit for quite a large house that I've drawn. Structural display, what am I trying to see? Uh, maybe again that comes down to presentation. Pen sets, maybe again that's presentation. Model view options, again presentation or view. So we can see that I could also use something called a ceiling plan and so if I was trying to create a reflected ceiling plan which was looking at the ceiling instead of the floor then I'd use that option perhaps in order to be able to do that. Graphic overrides, what am I trying to show or hide and renovation filter the same thing. Am I showing the existing situation, the new construction uh, or am I focusing on the, the demolition items or the, the part of the buildings to be demolished. So I can change these settings and choose these settings in order to represent different things and then of course down in the 2D elements I've got different types of dimensioning so this is things again that I've set up and the zooming based on the current view which just means that once I save the view this will be the representation of what I see rather than maybe being zoomed out 
or zoomed in in a different area. So it's important to get that right just for ease of use. So once I have the view set the way that I want, again right click, save current view, let's change it, ground floor, presentation, plan, ground, we could talk something like that, and create. So that's now the setting, I could click on a different view, which would take me to a different place, and then the advantage of a save view is I can double click there and it will take me right back to where I originally was. So it's saved that for later is one way of thinking about it, which makes it very easy for referencing. The next thing that we're going to do is to in the next process, take this and place it onto a layout. So again, these are my layouts, which are a little bit different from the standard ones. Uh, unlike my save views, I tend to not put my layouts into subfolders. I could, it's just not really something that I worry about. Instead, I use a numbering system that makes it very easy to identify what these are. So in, in this system, which is a system that I didn't invent but adapted from people that I've worked with in the past, my floor plans start with the number two. So A meaning architectural, two meaning representing floor plans, and that could be ground floor plans, or that could be reflected ceiling plans, electrical plans, lighting plans, and so on. And then we jump up to 3,000 for sections, 4,000 for elevations, and so on, just to keep them separated and to allow room. So at any point I can add extra drawings into this. So let's just say, I've already got one here, this one here is called lower ground floor, but I'm going to change it rather than just editing this one, I'm also going to make a new one just so you can understand what I'm trying to achieve. So in this list, I'm going to press create new layout. What am I going to call it? I'm going to follow this system, I'm going to use a custom ID and I'm going to add this to the, the number of where I'm up to. So in this case I have a 2000, 2001, 2002, so let's call this one 2003 and we see that we've already got a 2004 which is the roof plan so we've got a space for that and that's what I'm after. Next I'm going to make sure that this is on the right master layout. So again down the bottom of this list is the master layouts and the master layouts create what we could call a template or a stamp. That's the page, it's the reference, it's the size of the page and it's also the title block and the other things that we put on the page and I'm going to call this ground floor plan. Now I could write presentation at the end if I wanted to. Just to help note, I could therefore have two different lots of layouts, one for presentation and one later for documentation as we'd maybe um, proceed forward through to construction, uh, but at a preliminary stage a presentation view is what I'm trying to create and once I've done that I'm going to press create. We see that that didn't actually put it in order. Because I was doing this manually, it didn't understand that I want to have it in order, but what I can do is just literally drag and drop that, move that back in place. We see that some of them have triangles next to it, and this one doesn't. What does that mean? It means I haven't placed a drawing on it yet. So that's the next thing I now need to do. So we see that I've got my title block down here, and I'm going to drag and drop this view that I created. Again, dragging and dropping is the easiest way of working onto this drawing. Then I can go into the settings. We get an inbuilt title. Let's just move this up to explain it. We get an inbuilt title uh, with our drawings, which we can choose to use. I choose not to use those, um, but they can be helpful. We just ne would need to change the setting to represent what we want. I'm going to get rid of that for now. And I'm going to reduce this page, reducing its size, by grabbing the edge and using offset edge in order to reduce the frame of the window so that it fits on the screen. Now once it fits on the screen I could choose to then add more so it's representing as much of the building as possible. And for presentation we see that we've got all the landscaping showed in colour and that's not something that I would normally do if I was trying to create a technical drawing, a documentation drawing, for, for, but for presentation that looks quite nice. And then the way that I do this instead, again this is not standard, it's just something that I like doing just because I don't want to fuss with the settings, is I create a a manual drawing title, so we could call this one ground floor plan, 
And just in terms of a scale reference, what I'm showing here is that at 1 to 100, it would fit on an A1 page. Or if I was to print this out, of course, because that's the reality, at 1 to 3 or photocopy it down to A3, it would actually work at 1 to 200. And that's the nice relationship between A3 and A1, that it can work at both scales. And in order to explain that, I use a drawing scale in my title block. So that way, if it gets printed or when it gets printed, someone can put a ruler, hopefully not to my building, but to my drawing scale and determine if the drawing has been printed to scale. And that's essential because while I might spend thousands of hours in a project building the model and making the drawings attractive, uh, the ability to print it to scale is often out of my control. I don't have the ability to ensure that someone prints it exactly to scale, whereas when they go print, depending on their print drivers, what printer they're using, what size that printer is, it will maybe automatically default to fitting to the page. Now that might fit, in this case, to 24% of the original scale, or it might more likely, if someone has at least the right sort of size paper, print it something like 99% or 103%. And that is very unfortunate because it means that it's sort of to scale, but actually not, which means all of my hard work with making things drawn correctly goes out the window. So we want to avoid that, and this is how we place things onto a layout. From the layout, we then need to go to publish, and I'm going to stop now because I've been talking for a while. In the next video, we'll have a look at how we go from this point on a layout to publish our drawing.